Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So CMU version 1.15.3 was just released and in this video we're going to be going over absolutely everything that has changed in this brand new emulator version. So obviously since this new version has released today the 28th of February 2019, this of course means that the free public release is going to go live on the 7th of March. So before we get started with all of the new changes, for anybody who is only interested on if we have a performance improvement or wants to see the differences in performance between version 1.15.2 and version 1.15.3, down in the description of this video I will have timestamped a specific section of this video in which I am going to be looking at the performance differences between these two emulator versions using the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Obviously the reason I use Breath of the Wild is because it is by far the most demanding game on this emulator and since it is also one of the only games in which we are able to completely unlock the frame rate, it gives us a very very good performance metric by which to measure performance improvements in CMU itself. So yeah, if you only want to see if performance has changed and what the performance differences are, and yes, there are some performance differences between this version and the last, you can just check out that timestamp, it will be down in the description as I've already said. So before we look at the official changelog for 1.15.3, there is something I want to show you guys that is definitely hinting at the imminent release of the Vulkan API for CMU emulator. So when we open the native UI for CMU version 1.15.3, come to this options tab right here and come down to the general settings area then come across to the graphics tab you can now see that they have added this brand new drop down menu for selecting which graphics api you want to use with this wii u emulator we all know that they've been working on a Vulkan backend for a long time now, especially since the addition of the brand new texture cache in 1.14.0, but this brand new addition in this graphics tab just hammers home the point that this should and most likely will be added to CMU very, very soon. On top of this, if we scroll down my menu and go to launch any of my games, for example Breath of the Wild, you can now see that they have added this background image for every single game on CMU emulator, so when you're loading your shader cache, you're not just going to be loading through a black screen. This is definitely a cool little quality of life change, and it is definitely something that a lot of people, including myself, have been asking for for a long time in CMU. Okay, so let's now move on to all of the official patch notes, or the official changelog as they call it, and take a look at everything that's going to be changing in this brand new version. Okay, so the very first line of our changelog actually deals with this shader cache loading screen. They have now allowed the displaying of meta or boot.tga files when booting a game and while compiling shaders. Staying on some general changes to the emulator for now, they have also completely reworked the shader cache loading screen we previously looked at so that it is going to look and scale better on much, much higher resolution screens and monitors. The final point in this general changelog area is the fact that they have changed the settings.xml. This settings.xml file is the file that is responsible for holding all of your CMU settings, so pretty much all your game time, all of your game directories, and all of your MLC paths. They have changed this file so it is going to be more portable. Of note, they have allowed it to use relative paths where possible. Moving on to some CPU or JIT changes, JIT recompilation of functions is now multi-threaded in CMU emulator. This of course is only going to be active if you yourself are using a multi-core recompiler, so for example a dual core or a triple core recompiler with any of your games, for example The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker which can use a dual core recompiler, or The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild which can use a dual or triple core recompiler depending on your CPU. This is said to slightly reduce a micro stutter that is caused by recompilation. Moving swiftly on, we're going to be taking a look at some debugging changes they have now added. First up, they have added the debug option which is going to allow you to dump the WUD or WUD file systems of the currently running game to your dump folder. Next up, they have fixed a bug where the RAM dump feature would silently not work and as a result it would not create your dump folder for you. Obviously, these are two settings and options which, for the most part, most of you aren't going to be using, but improving them and fixing bugs with them is definitely going to be integral to the future development of this emulator. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at some GX2 or graphical based optimizations we're seeing in 1.15.3. First of all, they have added a brand new frame profiler which can itself be toggled via the previously mentioned debug menu. 
Hopefully this brand new profiler in combination with the debugger we've seen in the past few CMU releases is going to drastically improve both performance and optimizations to CMU both now and in the future. Our next two graphical upgrades and optimizations are kind of a two-parter. First of all, they have optimized the texture loader and secondly, they have increased the time before restorable textures are being dropped from the brand new texture cache. The timing of these dropped textures has been changed from 15 seconds to 2 minutes. Hopefully this change is going to alleviate many of the problems that many many CMU users were having with frame rate and frame time spikes in all CMU versions past 1.14.0. This issue itself would mainly happen at higher resolutions than 720p. Generally for me it only happened when I went to 1440p or 4k resolutions and having tested Breath of the Wild for about 4 to 5 hours now for my performance testing you will see a little bit later on in the video I can confirm that this hitching and jumping of frame rate and frame time is nowhere near as big a problem as we have previously seen. It's still not perfect, but it is a damn sight better than anything we had in 1.15.2 or before. Next up, in relation to graphical changes to CMU, we have minor optimizations in various GX2 API functions, fixed random crashes due to an out of bounds access in texture code, and they have completely fixed a crash that can occur when your GPU buffer cache accuracy was set to high. For our final change of this log, they have changed the direct input rumble so that it will only be started or initialized if the rumble value in the input window is set to a value of higher than a zero. This has been added as a workaround for a crash bug in common direct input drivers and hopefully it's going to help solve any issues you have been having in relation to rumble or using any direct input controllers with CMU emulator. Okay, so as promised at the start of this video, let's now take a look at the performance differences and seeing if there's any performance change between 115.2 and 115.3 in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, our most demanding game on this Wii U emulator. The areas tested in this benchmark are Hateno Village, Kakariko Village, Lurlin Village, the Zora's Domain Area, the Great Plateau, and finally we're also going to be testing Gerudo Town. The graphics packs I used in this video are a 1920x1080p resolution graphics pack. I'm also using FPS++, the very latest version which has all of the optimizations shown off in previous videos of mine, set to a frame rate cap of 165 frames per second, doing so so we can see what the maximum performance level in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is. While I do have some additional graphics packs turned on, for example the LWZX Crash Workaround, the Kakariko Torch Fix and also the Nvidia Explosion Smoke Fix, pretty much everything else is stock settings and basically all of the optimized settings that I've shown all of you guys in any and all of my CMU setup guides. So while there does seem to be a marginal performance increase, probably mostly attributed to some of the GX2 and JIT changes we've seen in the aforementioned change log, performance is still very very close between versions 1.15.2 and 1.15.3. The main reason I would give any of you guys to upgrade to this new version is the fact that the majority of the hitching and weird performance drops we were seeing in all previous versions seems to have now been very much so fixed and while I did say earlier on in the video that it's not 100% fixed, it's still a damn sight better than anything we've previously had after versions 1.14.0. Now while before version 1.14.0 we didn't have this small stuttering and hitching problem what we did have was far worse in the form of the VRAM leak that would severely degrade performance, almost down to around 40 or 50% the level of what you would have had when you initially booted in the game. Thankfully, the CMU devs are seemingly already aware of what's causing this hitching and stutter problem, and hopefully in the next few versions, as with the potential implementation of a Vulkan API, they can completely fix this issue. To be honest, there's not too much more I can say about this new CMU release. As always, if there are any specific games that you want to see me test on this version, do let me know down below this video in a comment and if I have the ability or if I have that game available to me, I will test it out for you and let you know in the comment section below. I'm gonna leave the remainder of these benchmarks play out. Once again guys, cheers for checking out this video. As always, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.